Welcome back, strangers. On August 9th, 1976, at 6.20 a.m., a trucker saw something unusual on a dirt road between I-95 and Lynch's River Road in Sumter, South Carolina. He stopped to investigate and discovered two bodies on the side of the road. Both victims had been shot three times, execution style. One only was shot in the throat, one in the chest, and one in the back with a 357 revolver. The victims are simply known as Jock and Jane Doe. Their bodies were kept in airtight, transparent caskets for a year after their deaths in hopes that someone would come forward and identify them. When the bodies began to deteriorate too much, local law enforcement raised money to have a funeral and bury the bodies in a local cemetery. The killer and the victim's identities still remain unsolved. Here are five disturbing theories on the Sumter County Doe's murders. Police believe that Jock was between the ages of 18 to 30 years old. He appeared to be young, but his dental history suggested he was over 27 years old. He had an extensive amount of dental work performed, including a unique kind of root canal that may have been done outside of the United States. He had various scars on his body that appeared to be from playing sports throughout his life. He had an expensive gold watch and a 14 karat gold ring with the initials JPF engraved inside. He had a promotional shirt from the 1975 Savoring Races that were held in Florida and a pack of matches from a Midwest truck stop. Investigators believe that Jane was between the ages of 18 to 25 years old. She was younger and smaller than Jock. She had never been pregnant, had no scars, and had two distinct moles on her left cheek. She wore three unique rings that appeared to be handmade, authentic Mexican or Native American jewelry that were made from sterling silver. Both victims had olive skin and looked similar. Many thought they were siblings at first, until later DNA testing proved that they were not related. Both took great care of their physical appearance and neither wore underwear. Their last meal was determined to be fruit or ice cream with fruit on top, and no drugs or alcohol were found in their system according to their autopsies. Neither victim was found with any form of ID or money on them. Number 1 the couple's belongings and dental work suggest that they were wealthy and had traveled throughout various places in the United States. Months after the murders, a campground employee near Santee, South Carolina, told police that he thought he had encountered the couple and became friends with them when they were staying at the campground. According to him, the dead man was named Jock, or possibly Jacques, and was the son of a doctor in Canada. His family had discovered him when he gave up on pursuing a medical career. Jock and his girlfriend were traveling the United States to get away from Canada and his parents. Jock tried unsuccessfully to pawn a ring like the one the dead man was found wearing while they were at the campground. It is thought that the J inscribed on the ring found by police was for the name Jock. Number 2 It is possible that the couple were hitchhiking and were picked up by someone dangerous or they had been carjacked by a hitchhiker before being murdered. A hermit living nearby the dirt road said he saw a man and woman dropped off on the side of the road that night. Later he heard gunshots and saw what he thought was a van drive away. The hermit did not call the police when he originally witnessed this. He only contacted the police after the story was all over the news. The book of matches found in Jock's pocket belonged to a truck stop chain that had locations in Idaho, Nebraska, and Arizona. A mechanic from Nebraska contacted police when he saw the case on the national news one night. He said he recognized the couple and thought he had worked on their car that had Washington or Oregon license plates when they were passing through the area. Someone witnessed a couple that matched the victim's appearance at a fruit stand off the Florence Highway in South Carolina. However, the person could not say whether the couple had their own vehicle or if they were riding with an unknown person. Number 3 Some have suggested that they were refugees fleeing Argentina or Chile during the Dirty Wars and ended up at the wrong place at the wrong time. The olive skin, lack of underwear, and Jane's unshaved legs suggest that they may have been from a South American country. It would explain why no one came forward to identify the bodies. They may have been an unlucky couple alone in a new country trying to make the best out of their situation before tragically being murdered in cold blood. Number 4 A more sinister theory suggests that the couple were drug smugglers who had a hit put on them by the mob. That would explain why they were killed execution style, which is synonymous with mafia hits. It was later discovered that many IMS-8 race teams were involved in huge international drug smuggling rings, and Jock had the IMSA Sebring promotional race shirt. Them or their family may have been involved in illegal activity, hence their wealthy appearance and family not coming forward to identify their bodies. Number 5 A trucker named George Henry from North Carolina was pulled over in South Carolina for driving under the influence four months after the murders. 
police discovered a revolver with its serial number removed inside his truck. Later, ballistic testing confirmed that it was the murder weapon used in the Sumter Doe murders. George Henry was interrogated and underwent multiple polygraph tests, but was ultimately not charged with the murders. Police were unable to establish a chain of custody of the ownership of the gun at the time of the murders. The revolver was originally stolen from the Raleigh-Durham area before Henry bought the gun. Today, no one knows who the mysterious couple were, why they were murdered, or even who did it. What do you think, strangers? Were they an innocent couple traveling the United States, or do you think they were in too deep in illegal activity that led to their murder? Let us know what you think in the comments below. We love hearing your ideas. Be sure to join us on our Discord server linked below to connect directly with us. And be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and smash that bell button so you'll know when we release our next video. And until then, stay strange.